Man, I want to, uh, we're in Exodus, you know, that means the exiting, you know, to exit, to make a way out. God always gives us out. He did it by his outstretched arm, right? Yes. And uh, we know that that was a, a picture of, you know, what was to come. It was all about Christ and our being set free, right? And where God says that he's going to deliver the children of Israel, you know, by an outstretched arm. You know, it was through Christ's outstretched arm that, you know, He restored us. You know, just like the one that was on His right, that outstretched arm, restored the thief, you know, that acts of forgiveness. And the other one, He had the same opportunity, you know. But, um, you know, I, I was, uh, I was, this week I was talking to someone who had an open door. And uh, we went and went by this guy's house, Alex, who does uh, pottery. And we was putting, you know, uh, John was, John and I and Nick was, uh, uh, well, we, me and Nick was assisting John. <laughs> he was hooking it up. And um, so anyway, as soon as I, this, I, this is the second time I've seen him. And when I walked up, he said, man, I got a question for you. I want to ask you something. Immediately, that's an open door, right? Yeah. So anyway, he had asked me something, and um, what allowed me, it allowed me to begin to, you know, pour some stuff into him. And you know, when you begin to pour stuff out, man, all of a sudden, he can hit you with, re with revelation. You know what I mean? So... I told him, you know, I said, man, Alex, I mean, I'm going to share some stuff with you that is really amazing, you know. And, um, but I said, just give me a little bit and, you know, because we got to get this taken care of and then I'll share some things with you. So anyway, I started sharing a few things with him, you know, just the stuff you guys already know. And, you know, that outstretched arm just really... You know, it just come back to me when I was reading right here. We're going to see it in a minute. But man, I just, I'm going to connect another dot for you, which was absolutely amazing. Remember I had said that when the Jordan parted, the waters rolled all the way back to the city of Adam yeah. when Joshua crossed it? Well, Alex had said something to me that just really, he made a connection that I didn't even see when I'm telling him about it, you know, about restoring the hearing. So I told him about how the first Adam failed, the last Adam prevailed, and Jesus was restoring the hearing back unto man, you know? And he said, which really blew me, it just, we miss things so much. And I said, you know, uh, when I told him about him restoring the hearing back unto man, where he lost it in the beginning, he said, wow, you, that's right. And he said, and you know what? He, well, and after I told him that, I said, well, here, let me, and I'm, I said, let me show you how, um, you know, at, that how Malchus in John chapter 18 was a picture of the first Adam, because the first Adam was prophet, priest, and king, right? So I told him how Malchus was, you know, a priest. He was carrying the word to arrest Jesus, right? So he's a prophet because he's carrying a word from the high priest. And his name, Malchus, means king. Prophet, priest, and king. That's Malchus. And how Malchus was a picture of the first Adam. And how God, how man lost his hearing, he's restoring it back unto man again. And he said, wow, that's pretty amazing. He said, but that's also a picture of God restoring Adam's hearing. I was like, what did you say? <gasps> you know, I never thought about that. God made a sacrifice in a way, even for Adam. Wow. <laughs> Though he had sinned, he still provided a lamb. You know, and... You know what that confirmation was to me? When we get to heaven, we're going to see Him. 
I always knew, I always knew that I always believed that Adam would be in heaven. I mean, you know. But that was a direct confirmation that, yeah, he restored our hearing, but he also restored Adam. Can you imagine walking around in heaven and seeing two people that look like Jesus? Because he was created in his image and likeness. Bearing the face of not the Jesus that died on the cross, but actually he's a twin. Are you with me now, Pete? Because I know, I know your brain is propped up. And you're running me through your channels. <laughs> wow. I mean, I know we're all going to bear the image of Christ. But I just think, wow, man. Wow, Lord, when I get up there, when I see Adam, and I'm going to say, well, yeah. man, you look just like Jesus. God, lean, on, you know. But anyway, it was just a confirmation. What was the other confirmation to that? was when Jesus got on that altar, he, he was saying, the waters on, in Joshua chapter, you know, 1 through 6, chapter 4, it, the waters rolled back all the way to the city of Adam. Right? Remember that? So when Jesus was standing on an altar of 12 stones, he was baptizing the Jordan. The waters. Because he was saying, what he was doing right there was going to go all the way back to, the, to Adam. Man, Adam realized what he did. Yeah. Yeah, though he had to work by the sweat of his brow, still you and I today work by the sweat of our brow and we're in the flesh. You can believe, you can believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that Adam, you know, asked for forgiveness. How do we know that? Because he taught his sons to sacrifice. And he said, hey, don't make the same mistake I did. And it was passed down from Adam to all of his grandsons, right? Even Enoch was a preacher of righteousness. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. They knew what was coming. How did they know it? From Adam. You see, everything that was going on, they had to believe what Adam said. Because nobody's seen God. From Adam to Noah, right? Now, no, Enoch was caught up, the seventh from Adam, by an angel that showed him all kind of things. But just like you and I must believe what the last Adam saying about his father. So those that was after Adam had to believe the first Adam. Now, I know that's kind of deep for you, maybe. But you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was kind of absolute, like, wow, Lord. You know, they, you know, we can, you know, Maybe, see, two red men up there? I don't know. It's kind of crazy, I know. But I know the light and the illumination. But we're all going to be light. And we're all going to bear the image of Christ. And what that is, you know, it, it, we try to describe it in the flesh, but we can't. You know? And, uh, but anyway, I thought that was just something I might, you know, throw at you guys. That there was just another connection that in the midst of giving out. Hey, this happened two weeks ago. This happened two weeks ago. Remember I told you it was planting time? Yes. Two weeks ago that door opened up. Two weeks ago a Muslim man's door opened up and I started telling him about the Lord and about Jesus. And man, all of a sudden you're seeing doors open up all over the place where you can minister to people. Right? Because it's the time that we're in right now. You know, wow. Just... Recognizing the time is so absolutely amazing. So let's, uh, we're going to read. Um, what's that? I was just thinking we're getting ready to enter the fall harvest. Time. Yeah, the fall harvest is good stuff. All right, guys, if you wasn't here last week, um, we uh, read Exodus chapter 1. I'm not going back and reading Exodus chapter 1 because I'll just start breaking more stuff down in it. We're going to go in Exodus 2. <laughs> you know, and we had broke down a lot. Remember that when the children of Israel came into Egypt, you know, last week, if you haven't seen it, I think uh, I saw Carl had already uploaded it. You're going to want to see that one. Okay, so you can keep up with what's going on. I got into the comparison between uh, Esau and Jacob and how Esau was a picture of the first Adam, Jacob, you know, last Adam, Jesus. We got into all of that. Um, another amazing thing that was brought to me um, was that in Israel, um, 
David and Rita just brought this paper to me. I had read that Benjamin Stone has been found. One of the pl one of the stones that was in the uh, the ephod, right? Wow. The breastplate, and um, which is amazing. absolutely amazing. So the stone that has been found in Egypt is Benjamin Stone, the son of the right hand. What? Now, what if they found Reuben Stone? Would that two stones be a confirmation? The hold the son, the son of the right hand. They found the last stone, right, Benjamin. He was the last born. Wouldn't that be crazy if they found, just so happened they dig and they found Reuben stone? Now in the stone is the emblem, Benjamin was a wolf, he was the wolf. Why was he the wolf? Because, you know, he had joined up with Simeon and devoured, um, you know, Shechem. Because after they heard what they, Shechem had done to Dinah, their daughter, the, uh, their sister. And they went in like a wolf. After hearing the word from Simeon, Benjamin, like a, a ravenous wolf, that's what his, you know, uh, his emblem is. It says they played, told him, you men be, you know, circumcised and uh, we'll join ourselves to your women and y'all can, jo <laughs> you know, join into us. And, but it was all a plot to kill him, right? Yeah. And um, so anyway, that gets into a whole nother ice cream sandwich but uh, I thought it was kind of amazing that they found this stone you know it was a while back now but it's just coming out right now these are all signs these are in fact remember I read Revelations 4 to y'all the two stones Reuben stone the Jasper stone and Revelations 4 that was sitting on the throne and the Sardin stone they found the Sardin and I'm like wow man Lord right before I know right before the Lord comes back the, I mean they're gonna see it they're gonna see it Right now, revelation is coming forth. The eyes of the Jews are being opened up, you know. But, but anyway, then I told you when Jacob came into Egypt, uh, we talked about how they got in bondage in Egypt. And uh, how they got in bondage? Well, you know, there was a great famine in the land and they sold out to Pharaoh for food, right? About 430 years had passed, right? And then they were set free through Moses, right? Or well, actually by God through Moses. Not Moses' hand. Right. right. Watch this. Remember the outstretched hand? Acts chapter 7 and verse, I think it's 28. I think it's 20, 24. 21 through 28, somewhere in there. Moses killed the Egyptian. Right? Because he thought that they would realize by his hand they would be delivered. No, Moses. Right. Your hand don't deliver nobody. Right. You can't even deliver yourself. Moses represented the law. The law can't deliver you. Right? But God tells Moses, after 40 years, when he's with Jethro, Ruul, Reul, you know, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, right? Marries Zipporah. You know, has a son, calls him Gershom because he was exiled out of the land. Now God tells Moses, now after 40 years, he says, you know, he appears to him, he says, now I want you to go back. Right? And you tell them by my outstretched arm, not yours. You know, it's a perfect example how we're, we don't have the ability to set anybody free. Right. That's proven over and over again. Unless God steps in and does something, nothing will happen. That's right. Nothing will happen. And we could be, Moses was, number one, beautiful. Number two, more learned than any man. Was learned in all the mysteries of Egypt. He knew it all. Right? But he couldn't deliver him. Even being Pharaoh's daughter's son, he was not able to deliver him. Man. Well, we're going to get into that in a minute. Let's, hear it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Y'all ready? Lord, I really thank you, Father. First, Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. Man, things are just, this morning, Father, it's just, Lord, I thank you for the people that are here. Lord, I thank you for my brothers and sisters, Lord. Lord, the ones that are here, Lord, thank you for them, Father. Lord, I know they love me, Lord. And Lord, I love them, Father. 
And Lord, I know you love us. Yeah. Because you're just good, Father. I know you correct us, Lord, when we need it. And it's because you love us, Father. And when the correction comes from you, Father, it's able to be received. Yeah. But when, but when the correction comes through the law, man, somebody using the law, Lord. Lord, thank you for your love for us. Lord, I pray for the people that are here, myself included. Lord, you know what we need. Holy Spirit, I ask in Jesus' name that you would just touch everybody that's here today. You know all the things we're going through, Father. You know every little detail that's in their life. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would just keep, keep doing what you're doing, Father. As we plant your seeds. Father, we pray that those seeds, one plants, one waters. Lord, we're asking for an increase of knowledge with understanding, Father. So we can walk in wisdom, Father to bring others to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. amen. All right, all right. Exodus chapter 2, right? Yes. Y'all ready? I'm going to make some connections as we go. Um, it says, uh, there went, remember, it's all about Jesus, right? Yeah. So all the connections you're looking for, when you read, you got to look for Jesus. That's who you have to look for. That means if you want a deeper understanding, you know, we read Exodus 1 right there. You know, this is the order that Jacob came in. You know, and this is what I'm talking about. I was just talking to Nick this week and showing him. He's reading and uh, he's got a long ways to go. He absolutely loves Jesus. We're thankful for him. But I was just, you know, showing him, like I told you guys, you know, when you study, if you really want to go deeper, just don't, you know, you need to read it first, but you need to dig because you need to look for Jesus. How are we going to find Jesus? How are we going to know what's happening and what's going on, right? So I told you guys, Jacob came in with, you know, the brethren. Uh, and I told you when Jacob come in and in, in uh, Exodus chapter 1, this is the order that it's listed in. But if you go to Genesis 48, it's listed in their alphabetical order. Right? So if you just read the Bible and you read, you know, and Jacob and Reuben and Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar came into, you know, Egypt, all 70, you know, okay, you got an understanding of that. Right? But if you take the time and look at what Reuben's name means, well, then you could put something together. So Jacob that comes into Israel, right, with his son. It's all about Christ, you know, Reuben the firstborn, and we go down. It says, Behold the Son, a man of hearing, has joined himself to us. Who's that? That's Jesus, right? Give God praise, a man of hire. I got into explaining what that was through the mandrakes. Dwelling with us. That's tabernacling with us. The Son of the right hand. Through judgment and wrestling, right? Through judgment and wrestling, good fortune and happiness will come. It's all about Him. That takes it to a whole nother level. You show somebody that? Wow. You show in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So let's look. That's what we're doing. We're looking for Jesus. That's the whole thing. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. God says He declares the end from the beginning. It's the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search it out. So if He does all of that stuff, we can see, you know, we could find out what's going to happen, right? The Bible says the Holy Spirit will reveal things to come to you and me. How? Through the Word. Let's read. And I'm going to make, remember, Moses is a picture of Christ, right? For God shall raise up a prophet, liken unto myself, him shall ye hear. Moses was prophet, priest, and king, right? Ruled over a nation. The comparison. And there went a man of the house of Levi. Levi's name means joined. When you're reading your Bible and you don't know what the name means, write it in your Bible. Find out what it means. Circle Levi joined. That's what Levi means, right? 
And he took a wife, uh, a daughter of Levi. The woman conceived and bare a goodly child. That means a beautiful child, right? She hid him for three months. Now, the description here is between Moses and Jesus. We're looking at this. She's talking about Moses, and she says he's a beautiful child. Because the law looks on the outside. Remember that? Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. Their eyes were open. Yeah. That's why Moses was beautiful. And Jesus was uncomely to look upon. Moses represented the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what you see with your eyes. Jesus represented the tree of life, which on the inside. Wow. Right? And the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, a beautiful child, she hid him three months. And you're going to see threes all the time, right? And when she could not, uh, when she, and when she could not no longer uh, hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes, and dabbed it with slime and pitch, and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. Okay, there we go right there. Moses represents the law, the word of God, being put in an ark. Okay, can we make a connection here? Did the word of God dwell in an ark, tabernacle, amongst us? Yes. Right? You got me, Nick? You understand that? Did There's three arks in the Bible, physical arks, Noah's ark, three levels, right? We went over, you guys know, I ain't doing it again, how the ark represents Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. The Godhead, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Yeah. Wow. Jesus said, it says, that the Spirit dwelleth in Him. You know, the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells in Jesus Christ. Yes. Right? So let's look at the arks real quick. Because, you know, if you don't know about the arks, well, you ain't getting, you're not, pick up some more understanding right here. Here it is, you know, Moses, who is beautiful, is placed inside of a tabernacle, an ark. Christ, who is beautiful, right, yeah. is placed inside a skin. Beauty was hidden in an ark made of reeds and dabbed with slime and pitch, which is ugly. <laughs> wow. Right? And placed on a river. Wow. Jesus is beautiful, placed inside of an ark. Right? Which is not comely. Right? But the beauty's on the inside. Now, let's keep reading. So we made the connection. So watch. You got Noah's ark. You have the ark of the covenant. Right? Why was the ark of the covenant beautiful on the outside? Because that God gave him the law. Inside of it was the golden pot that had manna, the bread, that's Jesus. Aaron's rod that budded brought forth the olive fruit, the uh, almond fruit, the Holy Spirit. And the, the law, right? The three in one. Jesus was the fullness of the Godhead bodily, right? You're with me there. Inside of the Ark of the Covenant was three in one. Noah's Ark, three levels, one boat. Right? Jesus, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So we got Noah's Ark. We have the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Lord. That's what it says. We're the Ark of the Lord. Don't you know the, that the Holy Spirit will live and dwell inside of you? Right? And then John said, oh, you know, Christ in you is the hope of glory. That's two. Right? And the Beloved said, oh, you don't want the law written on stone, but you want it written in our hearts. Well, that's three. Right. You are the tabernacle, the dwelling place of the Lord now. You're the ark. You are the carrier of His presence. Wherever you go. So you had, you had Noah's ark. You had the ark of the covenant, right? You had Moses' ark. And then you had the tabernacle. Jesus dwelt in the body. There's the four arks in the, bi in the Bible that God dwells in now. That, or He dwelt in. Noah's ark. The Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of Bulrushes, and now inside of you. And you walk on the water. What did you say? Mary. In Mary. In Mary. Right. Mary was an ark. Like, just like, that's what I'm talking about, you and me. 
We are the carrier of the seed and it needs to be birthed. How is it birthed? Right? It's got to grow. Right? So now, back to that ark thing. Man, I, that ark, that um, um, Noah's ark, the ark of the covenant, mm -hmm. Moses' ark, right? And then now you and me. That's four. Amazing. The other ones he don't dwell in no more. Now we are the ark. Oh, in the ark, the Bible says, in Genesis, it went upon the waters. Remember? Genesis 8, the word went is the word halek, which means to walk. In Job 9, verse 8, Job said, Our God, my God, walketh upon the seas. Jesus came walking on the water as the third ark. And the fourth ark that walked on the water was Peter. Wow, that's you and me. The water is the Word. That's what we need to walk on. And if we don't doubt the Word, we won't drown. But hold on a second. How was Peter saved? By that outstretched arm. <laughs> you see what he does? I mean, just now. Wow, you see the connections? <laughs> what? Man. All right, verse 3. And when she could no longer hide him, Jesus was hid, right? They didn't recognize him. She took him and put him in the ark of bulrushes and dabbed it with slime and pitch and put the uh, child therein and she laid it in the flags by the riverbanks. And his sister stood afar off to witness what would be done to him. Who was his sister? Mary. Wow. So the sister... Baby, watch this. Man, we can be... The, the sister... Come right here, baby. Watch this. I'm going to let you make some, some ties for me. We got... Uh, um, watch this right here. So... Uh, Right at the top up there, put um, put Noah's Ark, just little up there. Noah's Ark. I'm not going. You're going to put yeah four. We're going to put four arcs. Down like this. Yeah, put Exodus chapter two at the top, and put all, the four arcs right there. You guys ain't in a rush, huh? Y'all want to learn something? It's amazing. Exodus chapter two. I right, now put Noah's Ark under it. You just changed the whole thing, huh? Mm -mm. No. <laughs> no, watch this. You, you know I mean. I'm going to show you, I, I got to show you Jesus. Noah's Ark. Because until you see him, you'll never be changed. We got Noah's Ark, and then we got uh, uh, Moses' Ark. Just right under it? Yep. We can put Moses' Ark. Yep. Moses' Ark. Then we got the Ark of the Covenant. We've got the Ark of the Covenant. And then we have Jesus who was the Ark, the Tabernacle. Right? Right, Yeshua. There's your Arks, which now converts into you and me. So now, now God dwells in us. Right, Yeshua? And you could put us now. Uh, next to yeah, he dwells inside of you and me. I'm not going to scream at him today. I'm going to teach him. Watch this. <laughs> now it says, we made some other connections with the goodly, you know, and, and all of that. You guys are just going to have to remember that. Watch this now. It says that, um, and when she could no longer hide him, she took him from the ark of bulrushes, and uh, she made for him an ark of bulrushes and pitched it and all of that. And it says, and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off, right? His sister stood afar off to witness what would be done to him. Put Miriam, M-I-R. Where at? On the Yeshua? Yeah, you can just put Miriam's name right there. One R. M-I-R-I-A-M, I think it was. Yeah. Okay. 
um, put a line on the Yeshua all the way across the board. I'm going to separate this so people don't get confused. Now, Miriam, his sister, stands afar off to see what's going to be done with him. Right? You know what Miriam's name means? Put on a side of it. Open, just open, just a parentheses or whatever it is. Miriam's name is Mary. So Mary stood afar off to see what would be done to her son. Watch this. Miriam, Moses is placed in the waters of judgment, the Nile, where all the other ones died. And she's to watch to see what's to happen with him. And Jesus was placed under the judgment, and Mary stood off to see what would happen to him. And the ark was pitched. Right? The ark was pitched, though. The pitched, you know, Noah's ark, the word pitch, is kafar, which means it was a tome. Atonement was made. So as long as you got the blood covering, nothing can happen, right? So Miriam is a picture of Mary. Moses is a picture of Christ. You're going to see all of these things. And that's why when you read, you need to decode the name. and Because the whole entire story about Jesus. You can't make this kind of stuff up. It is absolutely impossible. Right? They don't say, you know, uh, Moses' name means Muhammad. Or, I have a problem then. You know what I'm saying? You start seeing stuff like that, or Buddha, or... No! No! It always goes back to God, to Jesus, Yeshua. Wow! That's how we know that we know that we know He is the one. That's right. Let's keep reading. All right. You can sit down, baby. I'll probably have some more in a minute, though. <laughs> and the daughter of Pharaoh... Watch this. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. So that was a place of washing, and we wash in the Word, so the river is the Word, right? So it's... And her maidens walked along the riverside, and when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her... Uh, she sent her... Uh, she sent her... Mm. She sent her maid to fetch it. Thank you. Wow. All right. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the baby wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrew children. Now, the only way you can see the beauty of who Christ is is on the inside. You'll never see him for who he is unless you open the ark. Right? Unless you open the word. The Word was inside the ark. You have to open up. You got to open it to be able to see the beauty that's on the inside. Because on the outside, it's just ugly. But Pharaoh's daughter, when she seen what was on the inside, she desired it. She wanted it for her own. Right? Then said his sister to Pharaoh, to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go to thee, shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Now this is Moses. Go, and the maid went and called the child's mother. So now it's being delivered back to the mother. You know, which is, wow, amazing. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away. Watch this. I'll make another connection. You tell me what this means. Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. What's that? Higher. Higher. Why? The law requires wages. You had to pay the tithe. I'll pay you. Moses represented the law. Right? Watch this. It says, And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. And, and he became her son. And she called his name Moshe, Moses, or Masha in Egypt, which means that Moses, the beauty of who he was, is to be drawn out of the waters. 
The only way you could see the beauty of who Jesus Christ is, you have to draw Him out of the river. You have to draw Him out of the Word. Because if not, you know, you'll never see the beauty of it. You'll just see an ark pitched with slime that means nothing in the reeds of the river. Isn't it something that two spies were hid in the, the flax and the reeds? That's what it is. Wow. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren. How old was Moses now? Forty. Death to the flesh, right? So forty years has passed now. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out to his brethren and looked on their burdens and, and he spied an Egyptian punishing, smiting, punishing an Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And in here, next verse, and when he went out the second day, right? See, it just goes to verse 13. They don't tell you the rest of it. That's why when you read, read it in Exodus, the account. Read it in Deuteronomy, right? Maybe go back into the New Testament and like Acts chapter 7 and see, because unless you read the Word, you'll never make all of these connections. So why did Moses kill the Egyptian? Why did he kill him? Well, let's read why he killed him. In Acts chapter 7 it says, Verse 22, And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and in deeds. So mighty words and deeds are not going to set you free, right? And when he was a full 40 years old, wow, it tells you how old he was. A full 40. That means he just made 40. It came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. Right? So he was exactly 40 years old. You think it was by any coincidence that it came into his heart? No. God put it there. Right? Through maybe a dream or something. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him. That's what the law does. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. He avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian, for he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God, by his hand, would deliver them, but they understood not. See? Moses' hand ain't going to do it. Right? Let's go back. The importance of reading it and getting a word in you. So, it says... Um, what was that? Verse, uh, verse 13. Yes. 13. Thank you. Keep up, Father. Help me, okay? And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together, and he said unto them that uh, did wrong, Wherefore are you smiting thy fellow, your brother? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this is known. Now when Pharaoh heard of this thing, he sought to slay Moses. Man. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. I just... They sat down by a well. Watch this next verse. Now the priest of Midian, he's at a priest, you know, his house, it was by the well. The priest of Midian had seven daughters. Somebody connect for me. 
Who's Moses a picture of? Christ. Christ is at the well? Right. Once again, a bride. That's one. But watch. Listen, here it is. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters. I think I recall in, in, in the gospel, Jesus said a well mm -hmm. telling a woman had, who had seven husbands. Oh, oh yeah. 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 So Mary, <laughs> you know, I was saying the real little I, I was just looking for daughters. Wow. Wow. It's, man. Mm -hmm. Make the, watch now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it even goes deeper. Watch this. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came to draw water. That's what Jesus was looking to do, right? There was a woman's at the well to draw the water, right? The Samaritan woman, these women are there, right? Jesus is thirsty. Moses is thirsty, right? Uh -huh. Watch this now. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came to draw water and filled, uh, and filled the troughs uh, to water their father's flock. Let me read it again. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. Who's the water bearer? Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? Watch, watch this. And when they came to Jethro, Reul, whose name means excellent, when they came to their father, whose name means ex excellent, now, this is pretty absolutely amazing because this is connected to Jacob. I'm going to show you how. And when they came to Reuel, the father, he said, How is it that you are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. Can you make a connection there? They perceived Moses to be an Egyptian and he was a Hebrew. He was dressed Egyptian, that's right. Little, little did the, the Samaritan woman at the well realize that the man, right? A Samaritan is half Jew and half something else. Right. Moses appeared to be a Samaritan. Was he? Watch. Moses appeared to be a Samaritan. But to get away from that, that's even taking you deeper. But she perceived Moses to be an Egyptian. But he really wasn't. The Samaritan woman, right? She didn't see Jesus who he re who, who she didn't realize that he was God that was out the well. And he says, if you'd have asked me, I would have given you rivers of living water. Right? Wow. Listen. Wow. Moses drives them all away. Here it is, Moses. How did you get it? Well, an Egyptian came, you know, and provided the waters that we needed and drove them away. Jesus is now telling a Samaritan woman, if you'd have asked me, I'd have given you living waters. How many times have you been married? Six, seven times. And the one you're with now is not your husband. What is Moses doing over here at the well? This is where he marries Jethro, gives him Zipporah. Right? At the well, it's about a marriage. At the well over here, it's about a marriage. Man, look for Jesus. The only way you can look for him, you have to know the new covenant. <clears throat> you have to know it. You have to have read it to see it, to make the comparison back. It's the only way. How do you do that? Jesus fed the 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. 
Joseph, right, fed his brethren. They were two years into the famine with five left to go. Wow. It's about feeding two and five. It's about feeding two and five. Right? There was a great famine of the Word that hadn't been come forth, right, until Christ comes and manifests Himself and starts feeding them. Wow. There was a great famine with Joseph. That's why it's important. Break the names down. Man, it, it, you know. But first, read the Word and know the story so that, you know, when I talk about the story, or so that when you're reading someplace else, you can connect these dots. Where am I? Okay, 19. Watch this. And when they came, 18, and when they came to Raul, their father, he said, How is it that you are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds. Right? Well, it wasn't an Egyptian. He just appeared to be an Egyptian. So now we have Moses, watch this, who appears to look like someone else <coughs> delivering them. Where Moses, by his hand in Egypt, couldn't set him free. Right? Because he was a Hebrew. And they knew who he, who he was. But now you get a picture of he's at a totally different place and he doesn't look the same anymore. And he's delivering someone at the well. Right? From the shepherds. Who are the shepherds? Pharisees and Sadducees. And the teachers of the law. That's right. That's who Jesus had to come and chase off and give the children of Israel the true water. Right? And maybe I'm going a little bit too deep. Huh? But if you've had your, your senses exercised, right? Because meat belongeth to the, unto the mature. Watch. But all I want to do, when Paul said, I preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified, this is how he done it. Look, we only got seven little bitty, I mean, uh, maybe 14 letters from Paul. Oh my God, come on. I could imagine sitting in a room with Paul, he would probably just, I could, I'd have to stop him. Stop it. Because there's no way I can contain what you're telling me. Because you think, you know, I'm connecting a few dots. This guy, he had to receive a thorn in his flesh, a messenger of Satan to keep him humble. Yeah. When this guy, this dude turned loose, son, the house shook. Yeah. Because he was opening it up. Wow. He was opening it up. And if you think I've ministered along, when Paul started to open it, at 6 o'clock in the evening, when they gathered, the boy fell out the window at 12 midnight. Six hours later, and then there was a resurrection. What did you say? <laughs> Is he not amazing? I don't preach long. Now, Paul, that guy, that son, I bet you he wouldn't have nobody in his church. <laughs> it says, and Paul preacheth long. And I mean, he was like, he was sleeping so that he fell out the window. Paul is downloading some information Amen. Yeah. and the eyes are heavy. And son, he just, the dude couldn't take it no more. Right? He was revealing some stuff that he fell back ways out a window on his head and died. How would you like to be preaching long and talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Wait, hold, what did you say? Wait, what did you just say? What did I just say? What did Jesus Christ preach? 
Paul only preached the dead in Christ will raise from the dead. Yeah. Oh yeah, Paul? Oh yeah, Jesus really rose from the dead? Well, we got a dead one outside, big boy. Come raise him up. Yeah. <laughs> After what? Six hours? Or is it six days? Or is it 6,000 years? <laughs> and then there'll be a resurrection? Wow. He, he, he is just way too much. <laughs> we can't even handle him. We ain't even, you know, we ain't, I mean, he's giving us something that is like, what? anything more would be, you know, crazy. And listen, I'm going to tell you, I'm not, it's, it's 10 minutes to 12. Paul ain't going to preach long today. I'm going to go to 12. That's it. I'm telling you. I'm going to 12. That's it. 10 minutes. I got to give you what I got. Here it is. So, all right. And they said, an Egyptian, verse 19, delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds. Out of Egypt, I've called my son. You heard me? So Je Jesus was in Egypt? Oh yeah, out of Egypt, out of bondage, I've called my son. That's right. Well, hold on a second. They were seeking to kill Jesus, and he fled to Egypt. Right? And when Jesus was born, there was a great famine. How did he get in Egypt? Well, his life was sought after, number one. Right? Moses' life was sought after. Right? They killed, with Moses, they killed the firstborn. I mean, they killed all the babies, right? Herod killed the babies. It's all a picture of Jesus. An exact repeat. And when I say an exact repeat... To the exact day. To the exact day. How can the children of Israel be in bondage for 430 years and be set free? And 430 from Malachi to Matthew, exactly 430 years, and we're set free spiritually on the exact same day. He's, he's mind-blowing. I bet you, and I haven't looked at this, but I guarantee it, the decree that went out to kill the children was the same day the decree went out to kill Jesus. 430 years. Or actually, it'd be 1,500 years after Moses. That's how precise he is. He, he's just that precise. And it all depends on you and me if we want to go find out and see if he's really that precise. Well, guess what? I've done a little searching, and he's that precise. But I haven't looked at that one. But I've looked at a ton of them, right? Let's keep reading. And he said unto his daughters, Where is he? Why is it that ye have left the man? Call him, that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. And he gave Moses Zipporah, his daughter. Now Zipporah, her name means bird or swallow or sparrow. Right? So Moses married, you know, uh, the priest of Midian's daughter. That's who he married. She wasn't a Hebrew. She wasn't a Hebrew, right? But it was from Abraham's brother, the clan of Midian. Let me keep reading. And she bare him a son and called his name Gershom. For he said, why was his name called Gershom? For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. So he called his name Gershom, which means exile. Jesus Christ left heaven to come down here for you and me. Right? He was a stranger in a strange land down here. Right? That's right. And it says, um, in fact, it even says it. Where does it say in the Bible? 
um, that uh, there's a scripture where it talks about him being a stranger. Um, I have to find it. But anyway, anyway, um, Oh, I still got a couple of more verses. Oh, good. I thought I had to stop right there. I got three more verses. Let's see. And she bore his us, uh, and she bore him a son, and called his name Gershom, which means exile. And and uh, Moses named him that because he had been a stranger in a strange land. He had left, you know, where he was born at, out of Egypt. For out of Egypt I've called my son. For he said, I'd been a stranger in a strange land. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. In the process of time. What process? How long is that? How long? Thank you, Miss Rita. Thank you, Miss Rita. There's a process of time of 40 years. And those 40s repeat all over. So, and it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Right? And the chip, watch this. I even know when the king of Egypt died. He died on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. He died in the fall of the year. Remember how long it took for the children of Israel to be set free? Seven months, the plagues. And they came out in Passover, right? And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel uh, sighed by reason of the bondage. And they cried and cried, and they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of their bondage. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham. Covenant of faith. Covenant of circumcision. Right? They, listen, they didn't circumcise in Egypt. God gave Abraham a covenant of circumcision where the people would be separated. How do I know they all wasn't being circumcised? Because Moses, when Sipporah bore her son Gershom, he didn't circumcise him. And it says, in God grabbed him and was about to kill him. And Sipporah took a flint. Right. Now we'll get into something else now. We can go into the flint, right? Oh. And circumcise Gershom. I mean, we're talking fast stuff here. Yeah. And God seized him because Zipporah knew that he was fixing to die. That's right. Oh, wait, hold on a second. So it's even by the faith covenant of blood that even Moses the law was delivered. <laughs> what did you say? Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the law of God was even going to kill Moses. That's right. Who was the meekest and most humblest man in the entire Bible? That's right. And if you don't believe me, ask him. He wrote it. Moses wrote it himself. He was the meekest man. <laughs> that's kind of, you know, crazy. <laughs> but no, that's a joke. But think about this. Moses done been before God, the burning bush, and all of that stuff. And so severe is the law, right? That even Moses, who represents the law, had to be delivered by blood through a son oh my god son the law that birthed a son whose name means exile the word came down from heaven, exiled, to come here to be with man. <coughs> the firstborn, Gershom, his firstborn, even Moses, the lawgiver, Zipporah, 
right? The wife of Moses believed God. Grabbed her son. Took a flint. Cut off his foreskin. Blood covenant. Doing what? Unveiling or revealing the head. Who's the head? I'm unveiling and revealing who Gershom is. He's a picture of Christ. Slings the foreskin at him. That's right. The flesh, the veil that Christ is going to be covered in. What did you say? And calls him a bloody bridegroom. A bloody bridegroom. It's Jesus. Everything I just told you is hot off of the press on. Never did I see it like that before. Fresh revelation down, downloaded straight from the throne. And he wanted you to know it. And me. Wow. It was exactly 12 o'clock. 12.01. I'm done. Hold your questions. Father. You're our bloody bridegroom, Father. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father. Thank you for your spirit that reveals your word to us, Father. We know that he, your spirit, Father, is here today. And here we end with marriage, Father. And we started with marriage. So, Lord, again, as you delivered as Zipporah by faith delivered Moses Father I ask Lord by faith that you deliver the family that we prayed for today and this was your confirmation to us that it would be done. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.